In the hundred plus years of filmmaking and thousands of years of storytelling, there are really only four ways to end a story. We're going to dissect one of these endings using an Oscar-winning screenplay with a true genius behind the wheel. And at the end of this video, we'll provide a free downloadable worksheet to help you plot out your ending. This is part three of the four endings in every film. The semi-sweet ending. Traditional protagonists typically need two things, a want and a need. Wants are external goals that are known to the character, specific to them, and drive the plot forward. In Onward, Ian's want is to meet his deceased father. I sure do wish I could spend the day with you sometime. I know. Well, there are so many things we could do. <laughs> I bet it'd be really fun. And with the help of a little magic, Ian and his brother Barley Whoa, set off on a quest to bring him back. We have to find another Phoenix gem. You hear that, Dad? We're going on a quest! But needs are internal goals that are often unknown to the character, universal to us all, and drive the character through their arc. Ian's need is to realize that even though he may not see his father again, the hole in his heart has been filled with his brother's love and guidance all along. I had someone who looked out for me. Someone who pushed me to be more than I ever thought I could be. I never had a dad. But I always had you. And at the end of most stories, the protagonist will attain some combination of their wants and needs and you can map every type of ending on a quadrant like this. Sweet, achieving their wants and needs. Bittersweet, achieving their wants but not their needs. Semi-sweet, not achieving their wants but achieving their needs. And lastly, bitter, achieving neither. In the last episode, we followed Michael Corleone's tragic fall from grace. Take care of you then. I'm with you now. It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. In a bitter ending. But this time... Yeah, I'm entitled yeah. to that money, goddammit! Yeah. Our focus is Charlie Babbitt's evolution from selfish... You hear me? There is a hell, sir. My father's in it, and he is looking up right now, and he, he is laughing his ass off. To selfless. Yo, Ray. Yeah. You're dancing. Yeah. This is it. Yeah, dancing. <laughs> in a rather touching, semi-sweet ending. A semi-sweet ending gives the protagonist what they need, but not what they want. Of the four types of endings, most movies use some variation of the semi-sweet ending, because it typically follows a positive change, character arc. F*** off, Hitler! <laughs> which writer K.M. Weiland describes as a protagonist with varying levels of personal unfulfillment and denial will be forced to challenge his beliefs about himself until he conquers his inner demons and ends his arc having changed in a positive way. So, we've imported the Rain Man screenplay into Studio Binder, so we can map out the necessary plot and character beats that created such a cathartic ending. Now, Charlie Babbitt is materialistic, an importer of foreign sports cars, and an a-hole. EPA. The whole world is choking on smog and they're going to correct the situation by keeping my four cars off the road? Well, of course! In other words, he is perfectly set up to follow a positive change arc. But how did he become this way? What's Charlie's problem? On page 9, Charlie is indifferent to some devastating news. You going like... Yeah! Charlie, this is Lenny. I got a call, a long-distance call from Mr. Mooney. You know, your father's lawyer. He's been trying to reach you. Your father has died, Charlie. Charlie? Anything else? Oh, that's it. Listen, Charlie, if there's anything I can right. do, just call... We learn all about the personal unfulfillment related to his father. Look, I told you before, we had a falling out a long time ago. My mother died when I was two, it was just him and me, we, you know, we just, we just didn't get along. 
This strained relationship is Charlie's ghost. A character's ghost, as described by Weiland, is something in the character's past that haunts them. This could be an event. Sweetheart! Look at me! Oh, no! A breakup. I think we should stop seeing each other. A betrayal. Guards! Please don't fight, Maximus. Right until dawn. And then execute him. In a way, this past trauma has shaped this character, for better or worse. Will you remove your helmet and tell me your name? My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. And no matter what your character's ghost is, it is ultimately the thing they must overcome to achieve a positive change arc. My name's Tom. Nice to meet you. I'm Autumn. Because of his personal unfulfillment tied to his father, Charlie doesn't care about his father's death. He only cares for the money he assumes he'll get in the inheritance. That is Charlie's want. Instead, he gets rose bushes. So, upright title to my prize winning hybrid rose bushes. May they remind him of the value of excellence and the possibility of perfection. As for my home and all other property, real and personal, these shall be placed in trust in accordance with the terms of that certain instrument executed concurrently herewith. What does that mean, last part? What does it mean? It means that the estate, in excess of $3 million after expenses and taxes, will go into a trust fund for a beneficiary to be named in this document. Who, who is that? It's called a trustee. What is that? How does that work? How does that work? Forgive me, but there's nothing more I can say. Is this Walbrook? Charlie tracks down this mysterious trustee. How do you know this car? That's Raymond. Oh, this 949 Buick Roadmaster, straight eight, fireball eight. Only 8,095 production models. Dad lets me drive slow on a driveway, but not on Monday. Definitely not on Monday. Who's your dad? Sanford Babbitt. Who? Sanford Babbitt? And on page 26, Charlie discovers their true connection. That's my address. I mean, what is it with this guy? Hey, who's your mother? Eleanor Babbitt. Eleanor? Died January 5th, 1965, after a short... Who the hell are you? Uh-oh. Hey, I'm accident. talking to you. Bruner, who is this guy? Raymond is your brother. Instead of a heartfelt reunion with his long-lost brother, Charlie holds him for ransom. Don't worry, Ray, we'll bring you right back. Charlie's plan B is to get the money by becoming Raymond's legal guardian. So they hit the road back to California. In a positive change arc, you'll often need an impact character. Wyland describes the impact character as someone who slams into your protagonist, catalyzes him into change, and has a major impact on his life. Raymond is the perfect impact character for Charlie. Ow! Don't make a scene. Ow! Stop acting like a fucking Uh-oh. His connection to Charlie's past and Charlie's ghost points directly to Charlie's need. Remember, a character's need is often unknown to them, sometimes until the very end. And the need is usually revealed through a moment of cathartic realization. On page 97, Charlie has this moment. When I say stop it, why don't you stop it? Why do you always have to act like an idiot, huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You think that's funny? Yeah, huh? funny rain, yeah, funny teeth. What'd you say? Funny teeth. Rinse. Why'd you say funny teeth? You said funny teeth, funny rain man. Rain man? Yeah. I said rain man? Yeah, funny rain man. Was I trying to say rain man and it came out rain man? Yeah, funny rain man. You? You're the rain man? Can you live with this? Yeah, 1096, one Beach Crest Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. When, uh, when, when, did, when did you leave? January 21st, 1965. 
You you remember it's that? It's Thursday, very snowy out. Seven point two inches of snow that day. Yes, that's just after mom died, New Year's. Yeah, yeah mom died January fifth, nineteen sixty five. And you remember after. that day? You remember that day that you left? Short, short and sudden illness. You remember that day? Yeah. That you left? Yeah. But was I there? Where was I? Where, where, you, you, where, where, you, were, you were in the window. You, you waved to me. Bye bye, rain man. Bye bye, rain, rain man. And this is Charlie's need to purge the resentment tied to his father and re establish a meaningful connection to his family, giving him an opportunity to grow and change. Yeah, Lenny, it's me. Listen. Charlie, where the hell have you been? I've been sitting by this phone for three hours. Just take it, take it easy. Take it easy. I'm in Tucum Carry. I'll they be there in a few. The cars to pay off the loan. The cars are gone, Charlie. Gone. Beepin wants his down payment back. They all do. That's 80,000, Charlie. 80,000. I don't have it. What am I going to tell him? I don't know. Are you paying attention? Yeah. Okay, yeah. now what What do I have left? Two jacks, one eight, one king, one six. Two aces, one ten, one nine, one five. One five. Yeah. You are beautiful, man. Go, Ray. Yeah. It's a high roller sweep. Big date. Gonna go dancing. Have to have to go to a date with Iris at the bar dance. You know dance? I don't know. All right, stand over there. Now, watching a character grow and change for the better is the foundation of storytelling. When I tell you to, I want you to just, just look up, real slow, just keep moving. Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right, start looking up. Yeah. A little more. Keep moving. Just a little more. More. Yeah. One more, Ray. All the way up. <laughs> there you go, Ray. Yeah. You're dancing. This yeah. is it. Yeah, dancing. This occurs when Charlie learns to put Raymond's needs ahead of his own. On page 162, Charlie is offered his original want, money. I can lose Raymond. I happen to care about your brother's life and the treatment he receives. I made a commitment to your father some 20 years ago, and I'm not willing to, to gamble with that. What is this? It's a very big check. All he has to do is walk away. $250,000. And no strings attached. Just walk away, Charlie. It's funny, I just realized I'm not pissed off anymore. My father cut me out of his will. You were his friend. You probably knew he tried to contact me a few times over the years. I never called him back. I was a prick. Hey, if he was my son, didn't return my calls, I'd have written him out. It's not about the money anymore. It's, it's about, you know, I just don't understand why didn't he tell me I had a brother? Why didn't you tell me I had a brother? Why didn't anyone ever tell me that I had a brother? Because it'd been nice to know him for more than just the past. Six days. At this point, Charlie firmly establishes a new want to take care of his brother. Unfortunately, soon after, Charlie faces a hard truth that he is ill-equipped to do so. Ray! Come on. It stopped. It's all right. See, I had a father fault. I hardly knew, a mother I didn't know at all. I found out a few days ago that I have a brother and I want to be with him and I'm, I'm supposed to give him up. Uh, no one is saying anything I, and there's no need to be that I didn't hurt him. That. He's not hurting me. We're not hurting you. Now, why are you interfering? This is my family. I'm not interfering. This is my family. Do you understand that? I understand that. Yes, you do have a brother, but the point is, he's not capable of having a relationship with you. I think it's very admirable that you made a connection, but I think the purpose of this meeting is to determine what is best for Raymond. Raymond? Do you want to stay with your brother Charlie here in Los Angeles? Yeah. Or do you want to go back to Walbrook? Yeah. Despite all his good intentions, Charlie finally understands and accepts what's best for Raymond. Charlie gave up his want for a greater good. 
Raymond's well-being. I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to talk to you again. Because you see, these uh, Dr. Bruner really likes you a lot, and he's probably going to want to take you back with him. You know? Yeah. Charlie's ghost, or the anger and resentment of his father, turned him into a selfish liar. But the discovery of his long-lost brother repairs and resolves that inner turmoil. I like having you for my big brother. Yeah. Charlie achieved his need, but not his want. To pull off your own semi-sweet ending, you must consider all the criteria for both wants and needs for maximum emotional impact. So, in the description, you'll find a free downloadable worksheet where you can plot these out for your characters. In the final episode of this series, we'll look at the social network to find out what happens when a character gets everything they want, but fails to get what they really need. Ray! I'll see you soon. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, get what you want and what you need by hitting subscribe and ringing the bell for notifications. And that will end this video. We'll see you in the next one.